My name is Chloe, and this is the Feeder Flow Podcast, where you'll find authentic conversations on how to get your period back and restore your metabolism from years of disordered eating, low calorie diets, and excessive exercise regimes. No trendy diets of celery juice and broccoli sprouts will be found here. Rather, my mission is to teach you balance and how the foods you've most likely cut out of your diet are the very ones that are essential for health. It's time we stop fearing food and embrace all that it can do for us. Food freedom, vivacious health, and a monthly menstrual cycle is possible. And I'm going to show you how to achieve this type of wellness without obsession. Yes. Yeah, so, so my personal story, it, it was, so I, for a little bit, so my mom was diagnosed with breast cancer when I was younger. So this was in about middle school, high school, not sure what you guys call it, but it was like about grade seven <laughs> for me. Middle school. And, yeah. Middle school. Right. So it was, it, that was a time when I started learning that actually, Hey, like we're not invincible. And you know, what we put inside of our bodies or how we treat our bodies is is so important. However, that kind of came at an expense to the point where actually it was fueled by fear, this fear of, oh my God, I'm going to get cancer. It's possible to get cancer. And and at that point, it really fueled this, this curiosity, really. At the beginning of stages, it was very much buying books on nutrition and whole foods and naturopathy and all of these things, because I was quite curious about okay, how can I optimize my health and make sure I'm protected and I'm safe? And perhaps it led to then that spiral, which is, you know, it was never diagnosed, but it really, as an expert today, I'm definitely well aware. I'm like, mm, this looks like orthorexia. Um, but ultimately I went through this phase where, for example, I would only eat organic or it had to be fresh. It had to be, um, you know, I couldn't have, you know, God forbid, frozen foods or canned foods or anything like that. So it was quite extreme in, in a way. And so that's how it kind of happened for me um, through that lived experience that was kind of, you know, it's my mother and she was affected. And therefore, that's what we had. We talked about around the dinner table is actually how can we cook more healthily? And then I kind of took it to an extreme. <laughs> so that was a bit of my story. And what helped me kind of get out of that was actually just understanding the science. So, so for me, it was getting well informed. So I actually that led me to want to study the health sciences which I did my undergrad in eventually. And with my undergrad, I started understanding actually with the health sciences, you see so many different aspects affect health, right? It's not just the food, not just the nutrition. So I had lots of courses on like occupational health, environmental health, social health, you know, different sciences. I did and too that, because oh, I studied public yeah. health, so very similar. Amazing, yeah. yeah, so good. And I think it allows you to zoom out because part of having an eating disorder, you know, for me living with orthorexia is that you're so, so pigeonholed in terms of your thinking. And it's, it's it, because that's your reality. I think that, that that was basically near the end of my thought. I wanted to just say <laughs> that for me, just being well-informed and really homing, you know, zooming out on, and having a wider perspective on health and, and what actually influences your longevity, your vitality, all of these things is actually really helpful in, in debunking a lot of those myths that I was holding so dearly to. It doesn't have to always be organic and all of these extreme rigid rules. It's actually really important to move away from that and, and allow for flexibility because actually mental health is a big part of being able to, to live a full and, and healthy life. Okay. So a million things here. I love that we <laughs> dived into this so quickly um, because this is actually something that I really wanted to discuss with you because yeah, I look on your website, I look on your Instagram, everything. You are someone who is a big believer in supporting your body through nutrition. And I am too, totally am as well. And I love how both of us have kind of a backstory of orthorexia where we took that to the extreme. And so I wanted to open up this conversation of finding wellness without obsession, because I feel like this is so huge. When people hear like the word anti-diet culture, I'm like, I'm not anti-health. Like never yes. <laughs> did I ever say that I don't care about your health and your well-being and that I don't understand that food has an impact on your body. But, and so I would love to, I kind of just want to throw it to you here, this idea of like, how do we uh, like take this idea that food impacts our health? It, it does. But then also this idea that 
we don't have to be obsessed with it in order to achieve that health. I don't, just let, let, let me hear your thoughts here. I want to hear your wisdom on this. Um, yes, I am so happy that you brought that up. And I think it's a really tough world to navigate, isn't it? Just health in general, because there's so many mixed messages. And I think there's a lot of black and white messages that are out there. And I think that makes it really difficult for us to try to cling on to because I think as humans, we want, we want absolute, we want certainty. And so we're constantly seeking that. And so whenever there's a message that's like, this is the magic solution, it's almost like we want to grab hold to that and, and just, just stick with that and be very um, inflexible in, in, in how we, we understand and make sense of the world and, and those messages. But in terms of the anti-diet world, it is not, like you said, it is not anti-health. If anything, it is pro-health. And it comes from a more elaborate perspective when we think about health. It's not just about food. It's not just about merely single nutrients, like all your vitamins and minerals. It's actually thinking about everything that influences your food choices, right? So coming from it as, okay, what is your, you know, what are your social relationships and how, and, and how does that influence the foods you eat? Where, where do your beliefs come from around food? How are you, you know, how, how did, how did those food rules growing up actually influence your beliefs around food and how are those either limiting you or serving you? And how are, is your environment going to influence the food choices that you make, right? So we're thinking about food as more, it's, it's not the, the end all be all, but it's just part of this whole thing that we call wellness and yep and then, <laughs> and it's, it's as well we have to think about okay what about movement how does that influence the food choices I make and perhaps what my body desires so what we're trying to do here is move is is listen to the body because the body has its innate wisdom it is so so clever and actually when we are really tuned with our mind body action we're able to make those choices that are what we call quote unquote healthy however it's just when we think about the beliefs and the values and the rules that we live by that can actually influence whether we align with that communication system or not right so if we're told something like you should not or cannot have a donut that then starts biasing and and, and really just twisting how we then have a relationship with that food specifically that makes it so perhaps then we want to have it more and perhaps we're going to have more of it in larger amounts because we were naturally, we want to rebel, right? If you tell me not to do something, I'm going to be like, mm, why? I'm curious. Let's do it, <laughs> right? Is that forbidden fruit syndrome is what we call it. And so part of, of making peace with food and finding health you know, with a non-diet approach is actually being able to just see food as neutral. And then naturally your body will decide for itself. And it's going to likely seek those foods that are really nourishing. Yeah, it's really, you know, it's less about what you are eating and more about who you are as the eater and the intention that you're bringing behind it. And I think that's something that I personally, out of all the, you know, thousands of diet books that I've read, I never <laughs> learned about how important my thoughts and feelings about a certain food was and how that really dictates whether it's going to be supportive or not for us. And how it's like, you know, I, there was a moment in my life where I was striving to eat really healthy foods, but in you, in like the first sentence, when we started this conversation, you mentioned like, I chose eating those foods out of a place of fear. And so it's exactly that. Like I could technically go back to a very similar way. I'm not saying like, go back to like being vegan or restricting or anything, but like I could go back to eating. There were moments where I was eating a very kind of varied diet and I was so unhealthy in that moment because it was like, I was so just a perfectionist about it. And I was so rigid about yeah. it. And I was scared of all these other foods. I was scared that food was going to do like X, Y, and Z to me, like something negative. Yeah. And so I could go back and technically eat that same diet, but have a way different mentality. And that's going to impact my health in a way different way. So again, Absolutely. it's just really understanding that we are these complex organisms and we're not a machine. And it's it's not a calories in calories out thing. And it's not a like, you know, just focusing on the nutrients of the food. Like there's so much more to food than Absolutely. the nutrients. Thanks for listening to this short clip from the Feeder Flow podcast. To listen to the rest of the show, head on over to your favorite podcast app like iTunes or Spotify. If your period has gone MIA, you're going to want to get her back. She's important for your health and misses you dearly. 
I've created a juicy online course designed to teach you everything I wish I knew about getting my period back, restoring my metabolism, and cultivating a healthy, nourishing relationship with food. The Get Your Flow On course is designed to empower and inspire you to achieve full recovery. Head on over to www.flowwithclo.com to sign up.